Okay, this video is called, Is Rheumatoid Arthritis Caused by Gum Disease? And the answer is yes, but let me just show you a little bit of how this works. This is neutrophil netosis, NP for neutrophil. Neutrophil have a multi-lobar polysegmented nucleus. Okay, and part of that reason is so they can, it's a smaller nucleus, it's easier for them to narrow themselves to become tubular and slide to a capillary because neutrophils are big. They're about 14 microns in diameter in comparison with the average capillary is about five microns. Another reason uh, for this funny looking nucleus is neutrophils can undergo diapodesis where they squeeze between uh, endothelial cells to get into the subendothelial space, subintimal space. The reason I'm showing you this picture though is when the neutrophils are activated, they will often try to phagocytize a bacteria, which means to eat it, but sometimes the bacteria is too big or the piece of debris is too big, and they'll sometimes do what is called netosis. Netosis means like a kamikaze, uh, kamikaze attack on whatever they're trying to control. So if it's a bacteria, they throw their DNA out of the cell like a net with a bunch of chemicals attached to it to immobilize the bacteria. Okay, osis means death. So usually you think of necrosis, sudden death of a cell, like, you know, as Nick Lane would say, with blood on the carpet. Okay, it's a big mess. Apoptosis is slow death of a cell, which Nick Lane would describe as Stalinesque, where the cell just disappears by gradual recycling. That's called apoptosis. And netosis is what basically, it's almost like a Seneca-like death. <laughs> it eviscerates itself and spills its guts to the outside. And in particular, there are proteins that are like a, you know, you can wrap thread around a spool. Well, you have proteins called histones and the DNA is wrapped around them and the DNA becomes unwound. You call it, you know, decondensed chromatin is the medical word for that quite often. But anyways, the DNA becomes unwound and the histones have arginine residues on them that are transformed into citrulline. I'll show you a picture of what that means in a moment. The reason why it's relevant for us is the immune system will form antibodies to it called ACPAs, anti-citrullinated protein antibodies. Okay, so the conversion of an arginine to a citrulline is called citrullination. And it's relevant because that's what you form autoantibodies to with rheumatoid arthritis. So the way this works is you'll have gum disease, bacteria will start to erode, you know, periodontal disease, bacteria will start getting into the blood or the bacterial toxins uh, at the site of the gum disease. The immune response is formed with these autoantibodies. Okay, and then here's some articles to that effect. You know, periodontal disease and rheumatoid arthritis, the evidence accumulating, you know, multiple studies have shown that. And then here's netosis as a source for autoantigens and rheumatoid arthritis. And the reason that's interesting is netosis, again, is like a Seneca-like death, whereby the cell is spilling its contents out into the extracellular space so the immune system has access to them, okay? And uh, that's why you can have autoantibodies to intracellular pathogens, intracellular structures, I meant, antigens. Okay, here is just a more specific chemical description of what citrullination is. So you've got an L-arginine residue, okay, I'll just call it an arginine residue here, which means a carbon double bond to a nitrogen, okay. This one has an extra hydrogen on it, so it's positively charged. All right, the enzyme that does this reaction is called peptidyl arginine deaminase, PAD. You're going to see that come up again later when we talk more about netosis. So then you form a citrulline. Uh, with citrulline, it's really just an amino acid that's been modified. It's a post-translational modification, meaning that it's happened after the protein was synthesized. It's not one of the standard amino acids, you know, the standard 20 amino acids. It's a special modification, and it just means that you've got a carbonyl group here. A carbonyl group is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, so that's a citrulline. Um, and so now let's just go to the other article and show what this is all about. And this leads to anti-citrulline protein antibodies. And then multiple sclerosis, I'm sorry, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis patients uh, have a genetic 
uh, vulnerability, predisposition to anti-citrulline protein antibodies uh, reacting in their joint tissue. For some reason, they have a tendency, some of them, to have what is called ectopic lymphoid structures, where they have more than the usual number of lymphocytes in their joints. And these anti-citrulline antibodies lead to uh, inflammatory reactions in the joints, and so they get arthritis. So one of the things I'm getting at is Dr. McDougall would lecture about leaky gut and its association with rheumatoid arthritis. And what I'm saying is you can get the essentially equivalent effect of leaky gut from leaky gums. You know, poor dentition, uh, poor gum, gum disease is just a way for bacteria to get their toxins or the, their entire selves into the blood system and then, you know, activate the immune system. And then this is sort of like the side effects of an immune response. Okay, so what's the, the teaching point from all this, this lecture? That patients that have rheumatoid arthritis should take very good care of their teeth. And the most important thing for taking care of their teeth is not to brush with toothpaste. Watch out for toothpaste. I gave a previous lecture called What's in Your Toothpaste? There's a lot of toxic chemicals in there. I don't think you even need toothpaste at all. Um, you definitely don't want fluoride toothpaste. That, that can kill the bacteria on the back of your tongue and remove those bacteria that are used to convert the plant nitrates to nitrites, the ones for making nitric oxide that help you to vasodilate and prevent high blood pressure. Okay, so what I'm saying here is that taking good care of your teeth means don't eat foods that cause cavity, which means avoid sweets to the extent you can. You, you might not completely avoid them, avoid them as much as you can, and avoid acidic foods. So the worst is like soda pop. It's not only sweet, it's also sticky, it sticks to the tooth, and it's also acidic with the carbonic acid from the carbonation. So you don't want to be drinking soda pop ever. Another thing that's really bad is orange juice. Orange juice just is really acidic and has a tendency to burn holes in teeth and really cause cavities. Um, so you want to watch out for that. The other thing, too, is every time after you eat, you should rinse your mouth with water to kind of, you know, get the stuff out of your mouth, clear the, any residual sugars out of your mouth as fast as you can, residual acid out of your mouth. I kind of like the water pick, water pick uh, toothbrush thing where you... It was, well, you it pushes water to clear out the material between your teeth. You can also floss. Definitely use a non, you know, extra glide. Just use a plain old floss so it doesn't have that POFA stuff on it, fluorinated Teflon-like stuff on it because that's toxic. Um, Interbrussels can be okay. Just make sure they're not breaking apart and you're not eating plastic. Uh, but anyways, you want to keep your teeth clean. And I'll just say something about Western Price. Now, some people say, oh, Western Price was a jerk because he, he was okay with eating meat, and the Western Price Society is the It's Okay to Eat Meat Society. Okay, fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Western Price, the dentist from the 1920s, 1930s, who traveled around the world and visited all these traditional populations. And what he found with all these traditional populations is they had good teeth. And it wasn't until they went and lived in the modern, citified areas where they started eating, you know, sugar and, you know, white bread and flour and all these other things that they started uh, getting a lot of cavities and dental problems. So if you just eat old-fashioned, single-ingredient, whole foods, and you keep your teeth clean, especially at night because saliva production goes down at night, that will help you to prevent this inflammation and that will help you to prevent autoimmune disease like um, rheumatoid arthritis.